Hello wonderful people! As we all know, strength weapons have evolved big time throughout the Dark Souls series. They are now as strong as ever. I would even argue that they are the best class of weapons in Dark Souls 3 at the moment. People always joke about the dexterity stat whenever you level it up as if it's the best stat, but that's an old joke and it's definitely outdated now. Strength weapons are equal or even better than dexterity weapons at the moment. You get hyper armor, flat defense, and the highest damage weapons on offer. But that's not our topic for today. The most requested topic people want me to cover is what is the best strength weapon in Dark Souls 3, and that's what we will do in this video. To start, let me show you the best strength weapons now in Dark Souls 3. The choices here are based upon damage first, since that's what we look for when we want a strength weapon. We want raw, pure power, and that's our number one concern. The second factor we base these weapons upon are the moveset, which is almost as important as the damage. If you have a super damaging weapon, but it's too slow to hit anything, then it won't be much of use. So these are the two factors to keep in mind while, while picking the best strength weapon. Note. All damage values are taken at 66 strength while one-handed. Let's look at the weapons now. The Dragon Slayer Great Axe, Heavy Exile Great Sword, Lido's Great Hammer, Heavy Great Sword, Ring Knight Paired Great Swords, Yorm's Great Machete, Fume Ultra Great Sword, Heavy Great Axe, and also some honorable mentions, the Great Club, Small's Great Hammer, and the Heavy Mace. Let's now lower the number of weapons on this list until we pick the best one. Let's start with the Great Axe class. We have the Dragon Slayer Great Axe, Yorm's Great Machete, and the Standard Great Axe. The Dragon Slayer Great Axe is a very popular weapon for a reason. It does immense damage, however, it does split damage, not pure physical damage. Also, its moveset is as boring as it gets, although this is more of a Great Axe class problem. It also requires faith to make it optimum, which means it's not a pure strength weapon, so the Dragon Slayer Great Axe is out of the list. The standard Heavy Great Axe is the second most damaging weapon on the list. With 636 damage when one-handed, it can also be buffed for more damage. However, the range on the Great Axe is a big problem. It has one of the lowest ranges of all strength weapons. It also consumes a lot of stamina, plus it has a very, very boring moveset. It's still a very good weapon in PvE, but the lack of range and its abysmal moveset is the reason why it's off the list. Yorm's Great Machete has the highest damage in the whole game, although it deals slash damage, so technically it might not be the strongest in every scenario. It also has a very good range but massive stamina consumption, but since it has the highest damage, this weapon will stay on the list. Now let's look at the Ultra Great Swords. The Fume Ultra Great Sword is a pure strength weapon. It deals strike damage instead of slash damage. The range on it is the best of any ultra great sword, although its two-handed moveset is mostly vertical attacks, so you don't gain much from its range. It can be buffed, but it cannot be infused. It does 596 damage with 66 strength, so it's not the highest damaging ultra great sword, but it deals strike damage. The weight on this weapon is so high, making it not a very efficient weapon when compared to its damage. So the Fume Ultra Great Sword is out of the list too. The standard greatsword has the highest damage of any ultra greatsword on a strength build while infused with a heavy gem. It does 622 damage. It deals slash damage though. It has similar problems to the fume ultra greatsword, but the only reason this weapon doesn't make it on the list is due to the next ultra greatsword. The Ring Knight Pair Greatswords. These akimbo style ultra greatswords are a good example where the moveset just flat out triumphs damage. This weapon is so adaptable and can do many things. Even though its damage is 579 with like 20 of that being fire damage, its combos can deal so much damage it's ridiculous. And let's not forget the style points you get with this weapon. The moveset is just so dynamic and fun. It's like this weapon is a class in of itself. That's why this weapon will stay on the list. Now let's look at our only great hammer, Lido's Great Hammer. This is the third highest damaging weapon without its buff. It deals 627 damage when it's not buffed and 674 when buffed with 66 strength and one-handed. It has a way more flexible moveset than other great hammers. Its weapon art is also very fast for a great hammer, making it a very adaptable weapon. It requires 60 in strength to wield, which is the highest of any weapon in Dark Souls 3, which also tells you that this is just pure raw strength weapon. Despite it being the third in terms of damage, it's the only one out of the three that deals strike damage, so it can be argued that this is the highest damaging weapon in the game, and for that reason, it will stay on the list. 
The last weapon on this list is the Heavy Exiled Greatsword. Although slow in general, it's the fastest weapon on this list. It deals 604 damage on a 66 strength build when one-handed. Although I consider this weapon as super weak in PvP, especially in 1 vs 1 due to how easy it is to punish, you cannot deny the raw damage it possesses. It also has hyper armor like all the others on this list, so with its speed and its ability to be buffed, this weapon can have an insane damage output and for that reason, this weapon stays on the list. So now we end up with 4 weapons from the list. Yorm's Great Machete, the Ring Knight Paired Great Swords, Lido's Great Hammer, and the Exiled Great Sword. Yorm's Great Machete's damage is top notch, but it has some problems. First, it consumes way too much stamina, even with the highest stamina. Also, it's one of like 2 or 3 weapons that cannot get a guaranteed 2 hits when 2 handed. That's why this weapon functions much better when 1 handed. It even has more range while 1 handed. One of the best builds in the game, or used to be at least, was putting Yorm's Great Machete on your left hand, since it can get 2 hits guaranteed and its hyper armor activates earlier when put in the left hand. Then you equip any longsword on your right hand. I used to like the heavy broadsword when I used this back in September and October of last year. This was like my secret build that works in every scenario, but a lot of people knew about this too. This weapon cannot be buffed nor infused, although its weapon art gives it more damage in exchange of changing your heavy attack moveset. The Ring Knight paired greatswords are one example of a weapon that makes countless other weapons obsolete. No matter how much you hate them, that is the truth. It's just a beast in every scenario. Its weapon art combo with each other, it also works perfectly with Pontus right eye ring, so you'll always do more damage with it when you have that ring equipped. It cannot be buffed nor infused, but that doesn't really matter when you have so much damage and one of the best movesets in the game. Its first L1 attack, its running L1 attack, and its rolling L1 attacks are unparryable too. Its moveset has so much variety so you can stay very unpredictable while using it. Although most people just spam the L1 button, since it can literally give you the win easily if your opponent miscalculates a move. Lido's Great Hammer's damage and its huge hitbox is really something. This is a pure strength weapon and it functions as such. Everything you hit will take immense damage. Its heavy attacks are unique and have amazing tracking, its two-handed moveset is slow and identical to most great hammers, but the weapon art is what makes it different. It's very fast and can surprise people since they don't expect you to be that fast. Also the finishing move on the weapon art does one of the highest damages in the game. You can one-shot most things with this thing. The only problem with this hammer is that it requires too much strength and it weighs like a mountain. Also it cannot be buffed nor infused, but it's still worth it, that's for sure. The Exile Greatsword has a ton of damage and is very fast for its damage. This is another weapon that you cannot go wrong with. It really has everything in one package, but its precise hitbox and slow moveset is what makes it weak in PvP. I mean, I can dodge this weapon for days and it doesn't have many mix-ups like our last two weapons on the list. But still, this is one of the best strength weapons in the game, also it's the only weapon out of the four that can be buffed with spells and resins, so you can really take the damage overboard at high levels of gameplay. So after looking at all these weapons, what is the best one? I think that the best strength weapon in the game, without a shadow of doubt, is the Ring Knight Paired Greatswords. I mean, these things are monsters. It feels like this weapon exists from another game. It's just that good. One mistake from an opponent can be a death sentence. I mean, there are a lot of ways to counter this weapon, but you cannot deny that if you screw up once, this weapon will kill you in seconds. Its potential in PvE is also insane. With the Pontiff Right Eye Ring, you can really go to town with this thing. That's not even considering how cool they look and how cool the moveset is. I feel like Rambo when using this. Nothing can touch me. Also, this is a one stone, two birds kind of situation. A lot of people wanted to know what is the best Ultra Greatsword in Dark Souls 3 after all the patches we got since the last DLC. And here is your answer. The Ring Knight Pair Greatswords are the best strength weapon and the best ultra great sword in the game, and maybe even the best weapon in the game, that will wait until I do the top 10 weapons of Dark Souls 3. So here you have it my friends, the best strength weapon in Dark Souls 3. All I request is just go easy on people while trying these monsters out. So yeah, that's all for this video, if you enjoyed it please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Farewell.